Are you considering applying to a pharmacy residency program, but you aren't sure where to start? Then stay tuned because I'll be sharing with you six things that you need for your pharmacy residency application. And make sure you stay tuned to the end because I will be sharing with you a bonus tip that may just help you get more interview invites. Hi, I'm Dr. K. Welcome to my channel where I help you live your best life by giving you advice and tips on how to grow personally and professionally. If it's your first time joining me, welcome to the channel. If not, welcome back. And if you like what you see here today, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss out when I upload new videos. Before we dive in, I do just want to mention that the information I'm about to share is specific to programs that utilize the National Matching Service. So if your program is not one that utilizes that service, then unfortunately the things that I'm about to share may not apply to you. Also, I want to mention that the information is specific to the 2020 application cycle. So if you're watching this video at a time after that, then the things that I'm about to mention may not apply. The first thing that you'll need to apply to pharmacy residency programs is to create an account on Forecast. Forecast is an online application process similar to Farmcast that is utilized to apply to pharmacy schools where you can submit to multiple programs using one account and at one centralized location. Most pharmacy residency programs do utilize Forecast. There are some exceptions for things such as managed care programs that may not be accredited through ASHP and their application process will be somewhat different from this application process through Forecast. As of the 2020 application cycle, the initial fee for Forecast is $110, and that allows you to apply to four programs before you'll have to then pay an additional $43 for each additional program that you apply to after that. The second thing that you need to do to apply to pharmacy residencies is to apply for the National Matching Service. And this is something that is completely separate from creating your account on Forecast. Once you create an account on Forecast, it then will give you a link to go forward to the National Matching Service where you will submit an application to be included in the National Match. The fee for the National Matching Service is a flat fee of $160, regardless of how many programs that you apply to. So the third thing that you need for your application process is an updated CV. And I cannot stress this enough. Please make sure that your CV is updated and that it includes everything pertinent that you have done throughout your pharmacy career. I have seen a few times where people will not get invited to interviews because they haven't listed everything that they've done on their CV even if they actually have accomplished certain things. If it's not listed on your CV, the program can't give you credit for it and it may limit your chances of qualifying to actually get invited for an interview. Make sure your CV is concise and to the point, but also comprehensive, as I mentioned before. Also, make sure that it's not super cluttered, but also that you don't have excess amount of white space where your CV is pages and pages long when it doesn't really have to be. So the fourth thing that you need to apply to programs is to request your transcript from your College of Pharmacy. And I stress, will you please make sure that you request this early, please? Because the application process for residency occurs from November to the end of December, early January, which falls right there in the midst of Christmas break. It's the holiday season, so everyone is more busy. And it also can be graduation time for those fall graduates. And so the school is overwhelmed with graduation and transcripts being requested, and then they may have a holiday hour, so there's fewer people working, shorter shifts. And the last thing that you want to do is to not get invited to a residency interview because your transcript did not make it to forecasting time. And I stress, please make sure that you request it early. And I say that because I have put myself in a situation where I was stressed to the max because I did not give myself enough time to make sure that my transcript will make it to forecasting time. I can't remember exactly which application cycle this was, but there was one time specifically where I requested my transcript from my college of university. They were really behind with processing because again, it was graduation had just occurred and it was just a lot going on. Time goes by, forecast still does not have my transcript. Finally, the School of Pharmacy sends the transcript, but then a snowstorm hit the northeast of the US where I believe forecast is located. And they were shut down for like three or four days. And so I am stressing because I'm just like, y'all, please, I just need my transcript to make it on time because I have worked too hard for this not to work. And so literally they uploaded my transcript like a day before the deadline for most of my programs. 
So the fifth thing that you need to do is to request letters of recommendation. And again, this is something that I stress that you please do as early as possible because the time in which this is occurring, it is a busy season for everyone with it being the holidays. Plus it's also the end of the school semester. So if your residency um, recommendation writers are like professors, they're already overwhelmed with trying to make sure that they do everything they need to finish out the semester. So the last thing that you wanna do is stress them out by asking for a recommendation at the last minute and they don't have enough time to actually do a quality letter of recommendation. I'll be doing a separate video on things that you need to consider to make sure that you have quality letters of recommendation. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and hit the notification bell so you won't miss out when that video is uploaded. So the sixth thing that you need for your application process is your letters of intent. And I cannot stress enough that quality matters. Please make sure that you give yourself enough time to write a quality letter of recommendation that is specific for each program that you're applying to. You do not want to have one blanket letter of recommendation and then send it out to every program because trust me, programs can tell when you have not done a job of actually making sure that your letter is specific to their program. Of course, you'll have a good significant chunk of the letter that may be consistent for each program, but you also want to make sure that you include specifics for programs that are unique and different that you look forward to, ro rotations that you look forward to, experiences that you may have had that will fit in something that's really different to that specific program. That will show them, of course, that you've done your research and that you really are interested but also that you're not lazy and you just decided to write one letter and literally send it to everybody. When it comes to having a quality letter of intent, please make sure that you proofread. Please make sure that you proofread. The last thing that you want is to send a letter to these programs and you have misspelled words and commas thrown all over the place that they should be because that's just not a good look. Of course, your application is the first thing that they will see and judge you off of. So you want to make sure that you're presenting yourself in the best way. Aside from proofreading it yourself, of course, you want to reach out to multiple people to get multiple eyes on the application because there's something that you may miss that someone else may see. And it would really be great if you could use someone that really is um, like an expert in the area of English and writing and grammar because most pharmacists, including myself, that's not really a strong place for us because we're typically better at math and science. And so for me, I actually reached out, at some point I reached out to an English professor from undergrad. And then as I continued through my application process, that last year I actually paid for a professional editor to look over my letters, to restructure some sentences, make sure commas and everything were where they needed to be. And it really did just make my letters look even better than they already did. Of course, I do know that many of you aren't in the situation that I was in where I had been working as a pharmacist and had more resources to pay for things like this. So there are online resources that are free that you can utilize that will help you. Grammarly is an online resource where you can go in and copy and paste your letter and it will scan the letter to then give you recommendations on things such as replacement of words that you may have used too much, misspelled words, um, sentence structure as far as where commas need to be or where you may need to remove them and just overall make sure that your letter does look well. In using Grammarly, there is a free version, but then there, are, there is also a paid version that you can utilize that will give you even more suggestions and tips on how to format your letter to make it look well. So if you'd like to use Grammarly to make sure that your letters of intent are top notch, then click the link in the description box below and it'll take you to the website where you can then either create a free account or you can sign up for a paid account that will give you even more access to make sure that your letters are at their best. Hey, so I see you're still here. You stuck around for that bonus tip that I mentioned earlier. So what is the bonus tip? The one thing that I recommend is that you submit your applications as early as possible. I know for myself, I pushed it to the deadline probably every time. But what I've realized after residency and being around and involved in some of the application processes is that programs will start to review their applications early because they have a ton of applications coming in. It takes a lot of time. And so they have to start earlier to give themselves enough time to make sure that they can review all of them. I know from my current site, they started reviewing applications probably a week before the deadline. 
And so as they review applications, they are assigning residency um, interview slides, even though they aren't reaching out to people yet. And so the last thing that you want to do is not get invited to an interview because you just didn't get your application in on time. And by the time they got to your application, all of the slots were already filled. So if you stuck around for the bonus tip and you're committed to submitting your pharmacy residency applications early, I'd like for you to type below in the comments, submit early, so I'll know that you are committed to submitting your applications as early as possible. If you'd like to find out more about the residency application process, also check the description box below. I've provided a link to ASHP, which is a one-stop shop for a lot of resources and tips to assist you with the residency application process, but then also just in your career journey in general. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you found those tips helpful and that you will utilize them to make sure that your application process goes as smooth as possible. Also, take advantage of some of my other videos that I have posted dedicated to the pharmacy residency process and personal development in general. Until next time, peace.